You can never underestimate the importance of good wiring. Um, again, Lawrence is here with his uh, Camaro. We're doing an HID system installation on it today. And one of the other things that he complained about was that with the old kit that was on there, which was not running a relayed wire harness, sometimes it would not turn on at all. Sometimes it would not turn on at least consistently. And so obviously, I mean, this is pretty much standard procedure. It comes with all of the elite kits and, and we, you know, we sell a lot of these as relay harnesses. Uh, the HD relays have been around forever for Morimoto, vastly unchanged because it's more or less a perfect design. Uh, but we're gonna actually wire the system up using the relay harness. This Camaro in particular also uses the optional capacitor link, the anti-flicker capacitor, uh, which is becoming more and more commonly needed, especially on a lot of domestic vehicles from Chevy, Ford, you name it. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just do a quick rundown of how the harness installs. It's really not that bad. It's all 100% plug and play. You don't have to do any cutting or splicing, etc. And honestly, it's great cheap insurance to make sure that the new gear that you're putting in your headlights is gonna work consistently, reliably, um, and just serve you well for the life of your car. So we'll check that out kind of step by step as we run through it here and uh, show you how this goes together. All right, so while Val is uh, mocking up the HID ballast and getting those mounted, I figured I'd give you a rundown of the harness once you get it unpacked. You know, and it looks like kind of a mess now, but honestly speaking, all of these connections are necessary. Um, at the heart of the harness is the relays. You have one relay for each side. Um, you have a bracket there, and when you go to find a place for the relays on your car, the thing that you want to remember is that you want to mount it with the bracket and you always want the wiring to exit from the bottom. And that way, no water <clears throat> is ever going to find their way into the relays. These things have a triple seal on the bottom, so it's pretty unlikely to begin with. But again, mounting them vertically with the wires exiting from the bottom is also important. <clears throat> In addition to that, you probably also want to mount this closer to the battery on the side of the vehicle with the battery because all of the lengths of the harness are designed to span out within the engine bay um, accordingly. So again, relay on the side of the car with the battery. <clears throat> now, as I said, this one actually has the anti-flicker capacitor link. Now this is already plugged in to the input, the OEM input on the harness. And what this thing does <clears throat> is basically it goes in between your factory wiring and the input to the harness. So this will come from the factory output, go into the harness, and it also has a ground here, just one simple ground, which is necessary for it to work. Inside of the anti-flicker capacitor is basically that. It's a capacitor. And what that does is it absorbs the current that's coming out of the factory wiring, which is pulsing on, off, on, off, on, off. And that prevents that from chattering or flickering the relays. But what it does is it absorbs it and then it releases it into the harness in a smooth fashion. And therefore, if your car runs a PWM or pulse width modulated, or um, daytime running light, or even like a, just a basic low beam circuit to preserve the life of the original halogen bulb, you're gonna need this when you're doing an HID swap to smooth that out and avoid any flickering on the, uh, the new HID setup through the relays. So very common, very important. <clears throat> Next, you're gonna see two connectors here. Both the same, these are 9006 male connectors. One is much longer than the other one, as you can see here. And again, the reason for that is because if you mount the relays on the side closer to the battery, presumably you really only need so much length to get to that, to behind the headlight that's on that side of the vehicle, but you're gonna need to go across the engine bay to the other side too. And that's why this one is so much longer, opposite side of the car. But they serve the same function. And these connectors here simply plug in to the inputs for your ballast. So they provide that 12 volt power to the ballast to turn them on. Once it receives the signal, from the OEM connection here, which again is passed through our anti-flicker capacitor. Next up, very simple. There's only two more connections left, positive and negative. The one with the fuse, as you can see here, goes to the positive battery terminal. So you just need to untwist the, uh, the bolts on that, hook it up with the terminal on the positive side, boom, done. Next one, just a ground. Most people connect this with the ground terminal on the uh, car battery as well, just side by side with the positive. But realistically speaking, you can ground it to anything on the car. We highly recommend grounding it to a original ground point that a lot of other accessories uh, collect into. Um, it's very important that you don't ground this to something that's plastic, rubber, or even painted, because if you have a shitty ground, your stuff's not gonna work. So that's an overview of the harness. 
Like I said, there's really only five connections on it, so don't be afraid when you see this thing. It's honestly not that hard to hook up, and the benefits will certainly outweigh the extra 10 minutes it's gonna take you to put it in.